All right, we're uh, about to put in a Old Man Emu BP-51 lift. Got all the parts right here. About to unbox them. They're going on this 21 Tundra TRD Pro. Just got everything unboxed. We're ready to start lifting the truck, pulling some wheels off, and uh, putting the lift kit on. Packaging came in really nice. Thanks to Modify for sending the kit in such great shape. Uh, one thing to note is that the leaf spring packs come just shipped. They're wrapped in bubble wrap and they ship them just straight up, no box. They are quite heavy. Um, and then the uh, Add a Leaf, which I did because I've got the deck system, the Lightner rack, I've got a CBI off-road rear bumper with um, quite a bit of stuff and weight on the back. I've got the to swing out tire arms and the jerry can holder. So I've got a fair amount of weight and I pull a trailer pretty often. So for the um, leaf springs, I've got the add a lift, or excuse me, add a spring to the leaf pack. So I'm gonna have to unbolt those and bolt them back together. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna start with the fronts and uh, try to get the easy part out of the way. The higher lift jack you have, the better. Uh, once you get this truck lifted, you're, you're lifting this thing from the frame. You need to get it as high as possible. And I was maxing out every bit of this three ton uh, Harbor Freight high lift jack. It goes up pretty high, I think it's 24 inches. And especially on the rear, I needed every bit of that. Struggled a little bit on this side to get the upper control arm free. Uh, there is a taper bolt that takes the weight of the So the brass hammer is from the bolt and then the arm itself. What I learned that I needed to do was actually just take a little more force, use a foot to step on the actual rotor itself, and push down on the lower control arm to give enough room to free the shock assembly. Um, some straps do come in handy for a couple different steps just to be able to move the uh, rotor out of the way to give yourself room to work. But again, you do not need to remove those two bolts on the bottom behind the disc. Um, it's, it's helpful. I learned a lot by doing it, but you do not need to do it. Here we are compressing using a McPherson strut tool. We're compressing um, the spring so that I can adjust the compression rate. In the Old Man Emu instructions, it specifies uh, a preload compression. If you're running a winch and or a heavier front bumper, which I'm doing both. So I went from 10 millimeters to 25 millimeters of compression. 25 millimeters is basically an inch. So I did that on both sides at this point. Uh, a McPherson strut spring compression tool 
can be a sketchy thing to work with. You kind of just want to balance your um, spring load on each side. There's basically two pieces of all thread that thread through two fingers that compress the spring, and it's a little tricky to work with. Um, there you can see me step on that uh, lower control arm to give room for the shock assembly. Um, once you figure out to do that, uh, everything's pretty much a breeze. With the new shock assembly in place, it's pretty much just bolting everything back together following manufacturer's torque specs. Um, here I am bolting in the remote reservoir bracket, which might be the trickiest part of the whole install. It's not that hard, it just takes some small hands and patience to get it done. It may help to pre-bolt the um, reservoir uh, circle ring uh, to the actual bracket before installing the bracket. Um, there's two small 10 millimeter bolts that fit into the bracket. That'll uh, make more sense once you see it. Uh, and it is uh, a little tricky to work with, but I uh, ended up getting it done and did it a lot faster the second time. So the passenger side went substantially faster than the driver's side did. Now that I was familiar with how to do it, I do recommend that you do fronts, then the rears. You need to do them. Uh, you definitely need to do the rears at the same time. So another trick is, uh, you see that strap that I have in there. It, it, it can help um, when putting the whole thing back together. See how it, when I use that other jack smaller jack to lift up the lower control arm. It just um, having a couple extra tools around to maneuver these heavy parts when it's up on a jack stand when you're working solo is very helpful. See there's what I'm talking about pushing down on the lower control arm by pushing down the disc to free up the room for the um, bottom of the shock mount to come out. See my little helper here being very safe with their safety glasses. Here's using that strap to bring the lower and upper control arms closer together so I can fit the bolt through. Um, that proved to be very helpful. There, I was using the jack to lift up the whole assembly to be able to put the um, steering sway bar back in. I want to say that the passenger side probably went 10 times faster than the driver's side. Front's done, it's time to move to the rears. Before I can do that, I needed to unbolt the leaf pack and put in the add a leaf. They are directional, so and they have a lineup pen. So when you order your kit, make sure you add the extended pin um, that kind of pins everything in place. And you'll know you have the add a leaf in the right position when uh, the and fits well and the tapers match up. When I tilt this back up, I think you'll be able to see well what I'm talking about. Um, after you put the pin back through the middle, you have to do the two outer brackets. You kind of see it fits, no big deal. Having some too, too large C channel um, helps a lot to keep the whole pack together so it doesn't just kind of go all over the place once you unbolt it. kind of wedged mine in there. It worked pretty well until the point of the hole lining up, which apparently just did, and then use the C-clamps to push the whole thing back together. 
bolt her up, call it good. Okay, I got the front done, and I just uh, put the outer leaf into the spring packs. The front is looking quite a bit taller, and now the back looks really saggy. So I uh, am running out of time for today. The remote reservoir is sweet. I guess I can pull off that pink sticker. Don't really need that anymore. So I had to adjust the uh, preload on the spring over and I had to adjust the preload on the spring. So you have to loosen the Allen nut on the compression ring. Use a spring compression tool that's specific that you compress the springs to take enough force off of the compression ring that you can rotate it. And then use a big punch and rotate the collar around. Um, I was looking for 25 millimeters, which is basically an inch. The, the factory preset is about 10 millimeters. So where my top of my finger is, is about where it was before. So um, quite a bit more compression. There's a, in the manual, there are some instructions that say, if you have a front bumper, which I have, and a winch, which I have, to address the preload um, to 25 millimeters so that you have three inches of height when you're done. And it appears that I got every bit, so I'm pumped on the front. Now the rear. All right, back at it. Got the fronts done yesterday, and they definitely are standing a lot taller than they were before. It's awesome. And today, I'm trying to wrap up the rear. Ran out of time yesterday, but uh, added the auto leaf to the leaf pack um, for both sides. Got the uh, brackets in place for the reservoir for the new uh, BP-51. And over here, same story. So I gotta finish tightening up this bracket and uh, pull off the old leaf pack, pull off the TRD Pro Fox Shock and sub them out. tightening the brackets for the remote reservoirs before I do the rest so here's where having more jacks come in handy um, you have to lift the entire truck up high enough that you have room to work and then you also need to use the jack the rear bell housing to lift the rear axle up and down in order to make room for your spring shocks to come on. bottom and then one at the top. Uh, it's actually a nut on the top that's pretty easy to get out. I kept the factory hardware, put the new shock assembly back in. Now full disclosure on that shock I ended up putting it in twice because um, they're directional on the rear. You, uh, you align that plastic roost guard to the front um, so there is a passenger and a driver's side. I did not take good enough note of that during my first time, so I have to put that rear shock in twice. So now I have all the experience. I struggled again with the uh, mounting of the um, 
remote reservoir. You cannot cheat this one the way that the uh, bracket mounts. It's on top of the actual frame and it is a little bit tricky to get in place. So um, here I am putting the leaf pack in. I actually wanted to kind of do a dry fit first just to figure out exactly how to get it. And then I, um, I removed the bushings because the Old Man Emu kit came with a greasable bushing. So with that in the leaf pack, I'm putting it back in place and um, I should have dropped the axle a little lower here. It would have helped. I did that on the other side, uh, but live and learn. So there's an alignment pin in the top of the axle that, that goes in line with the um, leaf pack and I use a strap to pull the axle forward or back depending on which is necessary. I only had to do it on the passenger side, the driver side for some reason fit up really well. It's just about done there and I was adjusting the uh, preload and compression on the actual shock assembly. It, uh, it's pretty easy to do and there's a there's instructions on how and where to put that in on the uh, old Ben Emu instructions. Just wrapping up the rear shackle there. Passenger side done, now moving over to the driver's side. It really is pretty simple on the rear. You just unbolt the uh, old leaf pack, the two bolts that go through the front, and then the rear shackle, and uh, pull it down, remove the shock, put the new stuff on. You do want to be careful, you can potentially drop um, your rear axle too low. There are brake lines, um, ABS sensors, stuff like that, that you want to not put too much stress on. So do be aware when you are lowering your axle to make sure that uh, you're not putting too much stress on uh, wires or hydraulic lines. There's the correct orientation of that roost guard towards the front. Bolting up the remote reservoir. Really helps to have a uh, pivoting head ratcheting box wrench to, uh, to easily, more easily, bolt those remote reservoirs. See on this side I, I had dropped the axle a little lower. It was quite a bit easier to orient the rear leaf pack. Battery powered impact driver was a lifesaver on this project.
had my son help uh, to lift the uh, axle up a little bit, but he went too far, so I had to go back around. And I wanted to drop it uh, because I didn't want him to drop it too far. There's adjusting compression and rebound. Getting everything bolted back up. wasn't the worst, but it wasn't the easiest either. I think with some patience and uh, some mechanical aptitude, you can definitely knock this out at home. I was fortunate to uh, have the access to my buddy Cliff Jennings of Jennings Racing Shop, and uh, that proved to be very helpful. So the back is no longer squatty, which is awesome. We're quite a bit taller all the way around. It looks mean. Now I might have to get bigger tires, but it looks awesome. So what I would say is if you are running a heavy bumper and a winch, um, you need a special tool. It's the most specialized tool is the uh, spring compression tool so that you can adjust the preload compression uh, on the spring. So it comes factory at 10 millimeters, needs to be set to 25 millimeters or basically exactly an inch. And uh, that is impossible to do without the right tool. Luckily, Cliff had one of those. So back looks awesome. The new springs are substantially beefier, which is great. The, I really love the gray tone on the BP-51 shocks from Old Man Emu. It just, everything matches the truck so well now. Uh, I'm really excited to get to play with and dial the suspension in. So, looking good. Here's the results. Looks awesome now. I ended up getting about two inches of lift in the front and five inches total in the rear, uh, which I think makes sense because my rear was so squatty. Factory TRD Pro lift comes with two inches in the front, none in the rear. Here's a 16 foot trailer that I pull all the time. You can't even tell it's hooked up and there's five motorcycles in there right now. Please like and subscribe.